in uh, off the Virginia coast, came over in the late 1500s, established a colony, went back to England, was to come back one year later, and of course they got in the middle of the Spanish Armada and were not able to return. When they finally were able to come back, some I think it was three years later, they, they found on the island uh, the fort that they had, an earth, earthen fort, and it was uh, totally deserted. Carved on one of the trees was the word C-R-O-A-T-O-A-N, Croatoan or some such pronunciation. Uh, when Joey and I were over in North Carolina, south of there, uh, digging around uh, in Robertson County, we, dis we discovered over there that there was a legend floating around and they connected it to the first baby born in that colony, Virginia Dare. No one knew what happened to her. But there's a legend over with among the Indians that there was a white deer and uh, that there was this woman and some of the locals connected it with maybe Virginia Dare had grown up and she had become this goddess of the forest or, or mm. whatever. But mm. there was the legend of the white deer. Is there anything uh, that you know comparable to that in uh, in Wales? There's no uh, legend of white deer connected with women in that sense that I can you know, tell you about. Uh, what I, I can tell you is that right through the lives of the saints, and I mean most of the, the saints, there are incidents concerning deer, often white deer. Usually they're stags. And the normal format, uh, one of the normal formats, is that the, sea, the stag or deer is being hunted by the huntsman. And it runs to the saint and usually flops down exhausted and lies on his cloak and therefore is totally protected. In some instances the, the huntsman, usually a prince or king, comes up and has to then pay the saint uh, money to or grant him land to build a church because this is immediately a holy place. No. The deer appears to be the sign of divine providence, and white animals are definitely uh, absolutely divine in, in this sense. Um, immediately you have the life of St. Adolcius, the life of St. Uh, Ducco, the life of St. Uh, Duffley, the life of St. Ilfi, and Tylo, and I don't know about the life of St. David, certainly the life of Caddock, and most of the, the other saints, where their lives are written, you do have these incidents with stags on deer and uh, white. The second thing is that uh, when King Tudric, Uther Pendragon, the grandfather of Arthur II, is killed, severely wounded, mortally wounded, about to die and dies after the Battle of Tinter and Dindale, a ford on the river White, in 508, uh, he's taken away on a cart, and the cart is drawn by two deer, two stags, and the laps use stags and deer to draw carts anyway. And uh, one version also is that, that uh, stag's antlers are placed on either end of the, of the car. And so it would appear that uh, stags play a, a part in this and are usually the symbol of divine providence. Uh, so, you know, stags do constantly reoccur and it's one of the revered animals in the sort of poem about the history of the world. If you read the Bible, you've got the history of the ages of the world in Genesis and mm -hmm. the stag comes into that. Mm -hmm. So the stag is a, is a much revered animal, divine providence. As regards white animals, uh, if you read the Mabinogi, the first four branches of the Mabinogi, uh, the Genesis tales, huh? which appear to match closely with the seven tablets of creation from Babylon, and they shot the all two the same people, you'll find that a, a woman uh, arrives uh, with a pack of hounds, and she is white on a white horse with white hounds and she appears in the sky and then is racing across the sky. So the idea of white animals and white things is very much uh, in vogue uh, to do with religion. I've already told you about the Gillingham herd of, mm -hmm. uh, Gillingham herd of uh, white cattle. Mm -hmm. So white is important, stags are important, and inevitably connected with divine providence. Mm -hmm. Quite what they may be on that, but I've not researched it. I mean, I, I know of it, you have come across it. It's not mm -hmm. something I've done. But, so it would be a Welsh idea, yeah. Okay. Well, we've uh, while we've got you sitting here, uh, you've just had a uh, had a look at a uh, couple of uh, sites on one mm. farm up in eastern mm. Kentucky, mm. The, the Spratt sites. Mm. Uh, 
Any reaction to those? Uh, yes. Uh, well, my reaction, as you well know, is, is that it's a religious site. It's concerned with Yahweh or Jehovah. It's uh, not only a religious site, it appears, I would think, to be a burial area where the great and the good and probably others were brought by the buried or cremated. There is uh, what I would call literature, inscriptions on the walls, certain areas around it, and therefore it's of very great importance. Mm -hmm. And it should tell us something about the area yeah. and about what was going on. The snake uh, sign there, which is Jehovah's sign, the great God, you know, Yahweh. Uh, in the ground and therefore you have a Christian center. It might seem odd to have a snake and a Christian center, but that's mm -hmm. the way it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've got a Christian center, it's a highly religious area, um, but it has to be a, a very, very important site. Mm -hmm. And could you could you recognize any of the inscriptions? I could recognize, uh, well, everything I saw appeared to me, appeared to me to be called an inscription. Mm -hmm. So I think they could be read. Okay. Well, that's uh, any help. Uh, you, you've got a cross in some cases with a, uh, an angle that way, which is an E and an E cruis. Or, and you've got a cross with an angle in the other way, which could be cruis and be cruiba, meaning the end. And, you know, the, but those are sort of a hieroglyphic, rather, almost hieroglyphic rather than cauldron, but they do occur. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, no. But the rest of it is pure cauldron alphabet, which of course can be read. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Pleasure.